Here's how I would learn LeetCode again if I had to start over from scratch. I've built out this whole thing. I've also built out like just this full roadmap of like starting from complete beginner, starting from intermediate, starting from advanced. And in this video, I'm going to try to make this as in-depth as I can and break down um, like why why even do LeetCode problems? Um, how did I do it before? What mistakes did I make? And then like how would I actually go about it again, um, you know, starting my journey? So uh, let's get into it. So um, why leak code, right? So leak code, the most obvious thing is you just get the, you get access to the highest paying jobs. I've talked to, I think eight, five or eight software engineers um, on my YouTube channel and all of them make an insane amount of money and all of them could not have gotten their jobs without doing like the leak code problem solving. And so like, you don't need to do leak code unless you want to work at like Google, Facebook and like, like you don't need to learn data structures and algorithms and like, no, oh my God, let's, let's do graphs and let's know how to do recursion. You will never use that stuff. But if you want to make 300,000 or 500,000, thousand dollars well you know that's the trade-off and so if that's worth it for you um which is why you know that, that was a, a big reason for me doing it is because i was like i want to get a job so personally i wanted to get jobs so i was like okay let me hop on the train and let me start like kind of doing this and so lead code also like you know solving like the thousand problems it also taught me like complex just algorithms and then also i that helped me understanding like system design algorithms so it wasn't like useless um by any means at all although lead code does not allow me to code out like complex applications but like it helps me understand and like the algorithms underlying them. Um, so for example, like a difference, you know, kind of like equation, like difference checks and things like that. Um, CRDT, Bloom filters, these types of algorithms that you would use in like a system design, uh, you know, format, it really helps me. I can just think about them better. And so um, this is why like I would urge you, I mean, if you're trying to get into Google, if you're trying to get into Netflix, whatever, I mean, you kind of have to do it, fortunately, or you just, you know, don't. So that's fine. You don't have to. Um, and so I want to go through like all the mistakes that I did. So I've been doing this for about, and it's 20, 2018 that so we got here. 2018 is when I made my account. Um, I could actually uh, disable my screen so you can see this. 2018. So it's been about uh, six years or something. And I want to go over um, uh, essentially like like go over like how I started. So um, I bought uh, like all of the mistakes I made up to this point. It took me seven years to get to this point of being like top two percent in the world at like lead code and all that. And it's because I stagnated a lot and there was a lot that I didn't understand. And so one thing that messed me up with lead code. Was and then like learning and like being able to get like, you know, a Google job offer super easily was like, I bought a theory data structure algorithms book. Um, I was like also a TA for data structure algorithms, but like that stuff didn't really help me. Like, yes, I could explain how Dijkstra's algorithm works and I could, you know, draw it on a board for you, but that wasn't actually what the interview problems like were going to be about. And so um, that was my first mistake was like, I bought theory books and I was like reading theory as opposed to just like actually solving the problems. And that held me back personally, because when I would see the problem, I didn't have the skills to solve it. All I had was like the theory. It'd be like, if you're trying to ride like a bicycle and instead of like actually riding the bicycle, you just read books on like how to ride the bicycle. Like you unfortunately have to actually go on the bicycle, maybe fall down a couple of times and then, and then you get it. And it's the exact same way with like the leak code or the math problems. Like you can read theory on math, but like really the best way to solve math problems and get better at it is just if you actually solve them like you can watch a teacher do all the theory but like you actually have to solve them and so that was something that was really huge for me for math but unfortunately i didn't see that in the same way for elite code that was the first mistake the second mistake that i had was that i was only solving easy problems so there was a time where like i was learning dsa for the first time and i sucked at it and i was like really really bad i didn't understand anything and it was like okay cool and then i like leveled up and got to the next part but i just stayed there because i kept solving the easy problems again and again and again and i would only sometimes a little bit branch out but it wasn't like in a way that was actually concentrated and so it wasn't you know it just wasn't working um and we can go back to my profile here where you can see this where like one like the work that i was doing wasn't that much so like this is me you know doing it in 2018 like this is me like super serious about getting a job and like it's just kind of not really there um honestly like just one submission one submission one submission and we could even pull up the problems that i was solving but like it wasn't a whole lot and this is me in 2019 also trying to do it and it's just not a lot like this is me trying to go hard for like a week to prep for Google and Meta. And then this is me, you know, about to do my Meta interview and I'm not doing anything like this, honestly. And this is me actually doing it. This is me actually trying. This is me actually going serious about this kind of stuff. This in 2020, this was me actually going serious. This is what I wanted to see or what I would have wanted to see to about myself um, in this era of these like four years. And I just didn't know, like, I just, I did not know. And maybe you also don't know this too, but like, this is the volume that you have to put in if you're trying to get better. And if you're trying 
trying to get good. Like you need to look like this because if you if you call yourself like you're actually prepping, this is not good enough, honestly. And it's totally possible for you to just do a, a little quick two month stretch, kind of like I did in 2021, where yours looks like this. Um, at least that's what I would tell myself. And that's how I would like try to do it. It's just like I need to, to do more and I need to practice more and I need to stop doing the easy problems. And the, the way that I would think about this is like, imagine if you go to the gym and then every single time you're like going to the gym, you just lift the same amount of weight versus you take someone who every single time they go to the gym, they put in just a little bit more weight, like just by definition of doing that and like stressing yourself just a little bit more, your body's going to adapt and get stronger. And it's the exact same way for like your mind or anything like, you know, like, like if you're playing chess, usually when you um, play chess, you gradually have like an ELO like number and they put you against opponents who are similar. And then you have to kind of incrementally go up um, and go one up and up and up. Like you cannot just only play against 1000 rated players or 500 rated players and then not grow um, and not go against harder players. Like there needs to be like some kind of struggle, some kind of like difficulty. And so it's, it was two pronged where I made those mistakes and um, I could have done better had I like actually prepped actually got serious about it and it was actually like you know doing it on a routine basis of like just two months like two months is more than enough the two months that i spent in 2021 doing leak code problems like i like barely barely didn't pass my google interview like just barely did not and if i did then you know we'd be on a dole another route maybe i wouldn't be making this video right now maybe i'd be sitting down in a a, a 11 story apartment in san francisco enjoying a, a cup of wine but here i am in poverty uh, making this video. So that was a joke, but uh, maybe things would be different. Who knows? So, okay. And I want to see probably one of the last mistakes I made was just following several different roadmaps. Like what I regret is doing the books because the book like don't really adapt or change and they're written and the information just kind of goes away. And also like there's no written evidence of you actually doing something. Honestly, one of the best things about using LeetCode as a website and that its popularity is the fact that it saves every single problem. All of the problems I did in 2018 are here. All of the progress is here all of its tracked it's all digital and i that's really really good not to mention the fact that like interviews nowadays are online now maybe that's going to change with ai maybe but as of right now it's all digital and so you need to practice on a digital thing if, i would see the argument for using a book when uh, like you needed to use draw on a right board and so you have to actually practice like drawing on a board and like getting used to that feeling but now that we're in remote interviews post pandemic it seems to me to be the case that it's just really really good to just code and also have this like, accountability that's public where you can see how you're doing you know how you're doing you know the real part there is no hiding you can't say yeah man back in 2018 back in 2016 i was trying just so hard and then you like because there's no profile but now you just go bro i see your profile you aren't doing anything <laughs> don't lie to yourself i know people who they will say man i'm working so so hard i'm grinding so hard i'm on this grind i'm really trying to do this and then you look at their profile and there is a five problem solved so there is a story about like the stories people say and then there is like the reality and I like leak code as a website for practicing because you cannot hide from the reality. So that, that's what I would do. I would actually not do a bunch of algorithms, not do a bunch of like roadmaps and books and theory books, but I would actually uh, follow roadmaps, like one roadmap, just do it. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. It's all the same stuff. Honestly, real talk, like, like my roadmap is not going to be too crazy or different from any other person's roadmap and their roadmap's not gonna be any crazy different from any other one. It's just like, hey, I like the person, so I'm gonna follow the roadmap. That's the real talk. That's the real, real, okay? Now that said, what would I do now is actually I would do the same stuff that I did in 2024, not this 2018 stuff, not the, uh, but I would do this, I would do this. And so actually I went to my lead code profile and I made a roadmap based off of this. And then I also found problems that were just really, really easy beginner that would have helped me in 2018 when I could barely program. Actually it was 2016 when I could barely program when I started my um, CS degree, but um, I've actually coded this and I'm going to share it um, right now. It's just locally because this is in beta. Hopefully by the time I post this video, I'll just tag it at the bottom. So you can go to the description if you want to check this out completely for free. It's just my problems, my personal thing. And and it's all these problems that I solved in 2020, 2024 um, in that order. And then, so like, this is like me before those. So intermediate, and this is what I would call advanced to so like top 2% in league. Like if you're trying to get the top 2%, well, you can just do these problems and you'll get there. So we can call them like the Ray. 477 the ray 500 and then for here just like ray 50 like just super easy beginner problems right and so if you click learn here uh, i also <laughs> vibe coded this by the way uh maybe i'll make a video on, on vibe coding and stuff but like you have a list of numbers you have a single number check if the single number is in the list oh my god like if you can't do this and you are a new grad if you can't do this this is a hard problem for you this idea that like you input a list also i you know i don't care about like the inputs this isn't about input outputs um you could just tell
tell ChatGPT to convert this into a, a method for you or something. I don't know, but like just take in a list, list of numbers, and then a single number, and then just check, like just write a function that does that. That's the big thing. But if you can't do this and you're a new, a new grad, um, you're cooked. I don't know what to tell you. You cheated probably through all of your um, your classes. But if you're a first year freshman, this is the stuff that I would be practicing. And I would just do these, do these, get chill, get relaxed. And then I would move into the intermediate. And these are the problems that I solve. So again, like just solve the problems. You could solve one a day. I don't care whatever but these are all of them and i just vibe coded this and I, i'm really really excited honestly i'm very very happy to have this um to have like my roadmap because you guys can just follow it and just do everything and also like this is literally what i would do like i would i would just do the 2024 thing and then also just begin beginner parts um if you don't but anyways um this was it i mean like this was you know again i, I want to keep raising this because I want you guys to see the volume. In one month, I solved 111 problems. In 105, month two, I solved 105. Then I solved 75. Then I solved 102. And I just kept doing this because I had so much time. And it was it was just like three problems a day, I think. Um, which I'm not asking that. I wouldn't ask that for you guys. I think if you just solve three a day, you're good. Uh, that's where we're at. That's where we are. And if you're just intermediate, you just don't even need to do that because you're not trying to get into Google. But like the problem is, is like when all of you, like when everyone, every software engineer in the world wants to work at Netflix and Google and Meta, well, now you have to be way more competitive and you actually have to work really really hard not even to mention the fact that um if i had done mock interviews that also would have been really really good for me so anyways other than that so i would go through this the roadmap that i just posted i would that's what i would tell myself do this problems it's gonna suck yes it's kind of hard yes leak code sucks but like you're gonna make a ton of money at the end of it and then at the end these are all based off zero track actually so that is where these problems come from it's um so these beginner ones came from at coder the beginner ones came from at coder which has like a list of really really great beginner problems in their comp competitive programming the um intermediate ones came from the grind 169 and then these came from just zero track so it was just a randomly sorted problems just gradually getting harder and harder and then um um, I would do spaced repetition. So when I'd solve these problems, I would make sure I was branching out, branching out, increasing, increasing, increasing. And then I would go back to solve the problems that I couldn't do. And I would also like try focusing on my weak topics, but like, because it was random, because I was doing random problems, I was end up doing like a, a pretty even distribution of the problems that I was weak at and the problems that I wasn't weak at. Or, and even if that was true, like, okay, even if, okay, it's maybe there's not at random, maybe it's not just whatever. I would just keep in mind, hey, I really suck at dynamic programming. Let me focus on the dynamic programming for a little bit. So anyways, that's how I would solve LeetCode again. And um, it's also like the, the full roadmap here that I brought out. So again, if you guys do want to check this out, um, you can just look at it in description if you want to, you know, kind of see it. If you want to see me actually solving these because I also streamed it. This I also did all of this stuff live, like not all of it live, but most of it was live. Most was live. It's like 200 hours of, um, of live streams. Um, and so if you want to see that, you can also, I think I'll try maybe put a link somewhere to it, um, but you can click on, um, it's pretty boring stuff, but maybe it'll kind of inspire you. I don't know. But uh, anyways, that's that. You can check this out in the description and I will see you guys in another video. So peace. Thanks for watching.